The Stoa is a digital campfire where we cohere in dialogue about what matters most at the knife's edge of what's happening now. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Stoa. Brent Cooper's back at the Stoa, and today he's going to talk about consensus building. Um, this is the third time Brent is here. Happy to have him back. Um, if you haven't read the article, I highly recommend it, but um, he is going to provide a brief presentation on it if you haven't. Um, so how today is going to work, it's going to be an experimental session. Uh, I'm going to take in Brent in a moment, and he um, he's going to share his thoughts on consensus building, and then we're going to have some kind of exercises that we're going to do. So it's going to be highly interactive. I don't know how exactly it's going to work, so Brent's going to tell you uh, the protocols uh, when we get there. but. Um, you know the standard is just don't jump in and interrupt uh, um you know you usually write things in the chat unless uh called to do so um so yeah i think that's it and i will give uh brent co-host access and uh yeah welcome back to the store my friend thank you peter okay um i'm gonna try to screen share and it's my first time doing this on the stoa so don't know Okay, can you all see my slides? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, as Peter said, uh, this is uh, based on an article I wrote, and this is also a kind of follow-up to my first two STOA sessions. And for this consensus concept, I've made a couple of videos as well. So there's some, some background to this. I've had a couple of conversations with Lehman Pascal, and I did a sort of proto seminar on December 30th with uh, some of the people here, in fact. And the consensus building process has a long established history, right? There's several organizations, there's several TED Talks and, and uh, lots of facilitators of this process. And I'm not a typical mediator or facilitator of this process, but I just want to establish that it's it's a very well known thing. And what I'm adding to it is the focus on the convergence process. So I, I wrote another article on meta convergence, which essentially talks about uh, four converging crises happening, especially last year, the economic, political, ecological and epidemiological crises, the pandemic. And seven theoretical, at least seven, there's much more uh, theoretical convergences. Uh, so a lot of the academic literature points to convergence of evolution, society, science, nature, knowledge, tech, digital as a subset of tech and organizations. And <clears throat> I bring this up because convergence is a major part of the consensus building process. And in a lot of these communities, there's a hyper focus on emergence, especially the, the network called Emerge. That, that's, that's essentially all they talk about. And that's the, the, the process in the middle of this. And so, um, <clears throat> so I understand there's you know, some new people here, but to, to, to really catch you all up, uh, we, we have to get on the same page and consensus building is, is a big part of how we do that. And so um, the second slide should be showing now. I wanted to um, uh, reveal the parts in, uh, in, in sequence, but identify the problem is the meta crisis. And that's something that uh, has been talked about on the STOA and I've written about and that there's a good amount of research on uh, Pabst and Milbank specifically are, are authors who write about it. <clears throat> and, and I see words like the meta crisis and uh, concepts like meta modernism often misrepresented or abused in uh, different intellectual spaces. So the, the process of consensus is to add clarity and actionable kind of um, processes to that. And so I propose the process or formula or solution is convergence. Uh, and we'll, 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 we'll get to that through the consensus process. And then the resolution, the outcome, which is partly unknown, but it's on the other side of these conflicts, is an actual paradigm shift, right? An actual agreement on a, a new set of kind of tenets and uh, a consensus reality, as it were. 
So I want to show these two images just to visually demonstrate the sort of obvious kind of effect and impact of this consensus process. Uh, philosopher John Rawls writes about overlapping consensus. And that's, uh, I think this is a good image to show that, right? So we all have different worldviews, different um, kind of circumstances and different priorities. Uh, but there's a common truth in the between spaces, right? And we each have different puzzle pieces of the meta problem, the meta crisis. And those pieces are of different functionality and integrity. And, and even though these images are static, I want people to think about them as in motion, right? These are alive processes of moving the pieces around and, and interlocking with the adjacent pieces, moving the circles and moving yourself within circles and across circles. And uh, so consensus builders uh, typically um, uh, speculate and agree that the process uh, begins with key insiders and spreads outwards by uh, ripple effects. And so that's part of my intention today is to generate a core group that can achieve that. And I wanted to show this slide just to kind of defer to a, a short video online by Lauren Suskind, and, and he breaks down the consensus building process into three steps. We're going to go through a process with the eight steps today, but I wanted to show this because it's very concise and it, it leads into the next slide. So step one is convening, right? And it's not just getting the right people at the table. It's getting people to agree on timetable, ground rules, protocols, et cetera. So that's, again, that's part of what I want to try to establish today. And getting people to uh, gain shared expectations, right? So we don't know exactly what the outcome is going to be, but we consent to the difficult aspects of it. We know what to expect, how we're going to be challenged, and, and so on. The second step is clarifying responsibilities. Who does what? Who takes notes? Who keeps the group on track. And the third step is deliberation itself, joint fact-finding, careful listening um, towards packaging agreement, right? So it's a very formal process. And, and Suskin says, all of which is problem-solving oriented. Um, so, uh, so this simple diagram shows the process beginning with a common question. And then there's a divergence. People develop, test, and refine their own unique ways to answer. And um, that's already been happening a lot. I think there's a kind of hyper pluralism of, of theory and of different mimetic tribes, as Peter puts it. The emergence is uh, distinct models, approaches, and archetypes emerge. And I think, as I said at the outset, we're kind of stuck in that phase, actually. We're deep in it. And then converge towards a shared practice, right? Where we have common ideas, principles, and practices uh, surface based on evidence. And it's important to, to stipulate that group th uh, consensus is not groupthink, right? It's the opposite. Groupthink is natural and the default. Consensus requires enormous effort and, and um, you know, coalescence and coordination. Groupthink is invisible in fact, and it gets suppressed. Consensus must be intentional and explicit. Groupthink may indicate drifting. Consensus is about rowing together. And when you're operating with a groupthink mentality, you may not even realize it. And when you're struggling to achieve consensus, you know it. And lastly, consensus is a byproduct of conflict. And that's what makes it different from groupthink. Uh, that we that we we lean into that and people are able to speak up and call out uh, anomalies and contradictions in the the status quo. Um, <clears throat> so uh, so this is this session is an invitation to all that to block removal to conceptual change to conflict resolution, coordinating action through the consensus building project. And so to get us started. Um, this slide again shows that divergence, emergence, convergence, and the next the next slide, the eight breaths of process architecture, uh, is a deeper reflection of that whole thing. And so the fact that they're called breaths is indicative of how it's a kind of living process, right? And we're all embodied practitioners coming to meet this. So if we can, I want everyone to be unmuted, so we can do a kind of collective breath where we inhale together, we hold, 
And because we're going to go through this groan zone in the middle as we exhale, I want everybody to groan. And if you're if you're feeling good today, maybe you can moan a little bit. So everybody inhale. Hold. Keep holding. Feels good. Okay, and exhale and groan. Humanity. Oh. 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 Wonderful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That's what I like to hear. Okay, so so this process is eight breaths of process architecture. According to uh, consensus builders uh, themselves, um, such as Ursula Hillbrand, who's who's a member of the STOA, and and I've talked with, and she attended my my seminar and gave me great feedback and sort of guidance. This process is relatively infallible if it's facilitated correctly, and I stipulated uh, before and again that I'm not a, a, a trained um, facilitator or mediator. So this, this process requires like delicacy and, and, um, and respect. And I have to protect this as, a, as an art form. And the metaphor she used was that I'm bringing the group to the tree to, to look at the tree. We're not, I'm not cutting down the tree and dragging it to you. Uh, I'm bringing this group to the tree and we need enough time to, 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 to process that, uh, to come to peace with, with the conflict uh, that emerges and uh, to plan an ending and play that ending out. Um, so, um, so, um, so, uh, conceptual convergence and consensus building is only possible with with much better conversations that are that are happening. And a lot of what I call priming or briefing which is what a lot of lectures do, right? The lectures um, and, and uh, interactive sessions on the STOA help us try to establish some common operating principles, right? And there's many sort of self-coherent groups online, such as Integral Theory, Game B, the Intellectual Dark Web, Rebel Wisdom, Emerge, that practice conversation and practice sense-making. But from my perspective, um, they don't do it sufficiently or efficiently enough. It could be much better. And I say that because I have substantive critiques, but also because um, there's some of these groups are exclusive, right? And so you can't actually have collective sense making without a whole collective. And so Peter's been great at holding space, being a steward, holding sort of just uh, creating the opportunities for these emergences. Uh, and with respect to the um, the image, the process requires stewards and senseis. So I'm assuming the role of a, of a sensei today, uh, which is to um, create opportunities for capacity building and 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 meta capacity. You know, building capacity to build more, more capacity. And the Stoa does include some of that too. You know, such as um, dojos. Uh, and, and, and whatnot, but, but today I hope to uh, present a sort of dynamic or dialectic uh, between Peter and I while I lead the process, but he holds the space and I invite people to practice. Um, and so this is why it requires the process laid, laid out herein, the opportunity for learning, integration, transformation, and good faith with knock-on effects. But it implies a difficulty for, for those challenged and exercises in humility, like dynamic subordination, ego vulnerability, willingness to be wrong, and most importantly, consent to mediation. So I consent to mediation. Other people have to consent too. And just to return it to consensus, like I, I insist because the sort of the research suggests and the discourse suggests that. Uh, and the, the United Nations um, insists that consensus building is the process to, to get us through the, the so-called meta crisis. And, um, and so, yeah, let's not delude ourselves. This is going to be easy. As Innes writes, one of my sources, quote, consensus building is time consuming and requires skill and training, end quote. So that's, that's what this uh, session is about. It's prefigurative and I want to invite a commitment to plan the next session. 
right? So today we'll go through the eight breaths, but then the next time we'll go through the eight breaths. And this is a, a, a recursive process. You have to keep doing it because what we're trying to do is achieve very advanced iterative synthetic sol solutions to the matter crisis. So um, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna stop screen sharing for a second so y'all can see me, but basically I'm gonna go off the, the diagram some more um, and, and start with the, the call, right? And so as per my previous uh, critiques and what I've said this morning, I'm sort of issuing a call, which is a call to action, a call for other callers to join me. Um, and, and, and that includes, uh, of course, anybody who wants to, but uh, particularly, you know, some of the names I'm looking at here, like Tanner Millen, Nate Kaufman, Adam Robert, uh, Jen Zendel, these are uh, Johan Weber, these are people that I know that we've already spoken and generated some kind of one-to-one -one consensus. Um, and so um, between the, the first breath and the next breath, clarify uh, is commitment. And, and, and so I'm hoping in the second breath, I'll hand it off to the group a little more so we can help clarify and um, sort of steel man uh, my call. So, then for the next breath, the invitation, we can collectively craft an invitation that will sort of you know, steal the culture or go viral or whatever um, in, a, in a productive way, right? To, to invite the key stakeholders of kind of the meta crisis response. Um, <clears throat> so I'll hand it back to Peter for a second to kind of hold the space as we try to bridge that. And I'll, I'll invite uh, some people for the second breath to, to speak up at I me, mean, whoever wants to, but then I'm going to suggest we break out into uh, breakout rooms and that um, people figure out their different roles and their different positions with respect to this process and perhaps maybe nominate somebody to speak when we come back into a, a larger group. Uh, how does that sound, Peter? Yeah, um, a few comments uh, just for the whole group. Uh, so since it's going to be interactive and people are going to jump off of, of mute, uh, if you don't want to be on YouTube, uh, just indicate that and I'll only put the, the first portion of, of Brent's talk on YouTube and I won't put the interactive portion on YouTube if you don't feel comfortable uh, uh, being on. So just uh, as a stewarding note. And um, it might be prudent to have a, a space for people to just ask clarifying questions on the process right now before we jump into it, because that was a lot of uh, conceptual stuff uh, uh, that given to us. So maybe we can have a moment for that. So if anyone has any questions, uh, just pop off mute right now and maybe you can ask Brent um, any clarifying questions. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to unmute Brent because I didn't see you read the question. So I, I got the link to your Medium article that has the graphic. Do you want me to share that? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, I want everyone to have access to it. Of course, I should have shared it uh, from the outset. Okay. And if someone else and that, that helps. And that links that links to the PDF for the eight breaths process. So if anybody wants to pull that up, it helps all of us kind of stay on track. Uh, I have a question. It's kind of a stupid question, perhaps, but I'm just trying to follow your protocol. It's something new to me. Um, what's the common question that we're considering today? Um, yeah, thanks, John. That's, uh, let's, let's say that there's no stupid questions. Uh, that, that gives me a chance to clarify, right? And so the common question I wrote in my notes here, goal A and goal, and goal B. Goal A is to, is, is, is to build consensus around the idea of consensus itself. So it's a kind of meta intervention. And so the common question is devoid of content. It's just to invite you to the consensus process, more or less based on my article and, and research, right? And the, again, this isn't something that, that I invented, but I invite you to that process because I think it's what the STOA and all these adjacent spaces need. Um, and so goal B, I, I describe as a more radical consensus, and that's based off of some of my work specifically and some of what I identify as existing consensuses, right? And so there's, there's um, 
you know, I mean, let's just take the Washington consensus as an example, because I was researching it yesterday. And, and the Washington consensus is something that was coined to describe uh, 10, 10 tenets or kind of premises of um, economic uh, and political development in Latin America. And the, cr the creator of that actually was very regretful that that term, the Washington consensus, had been conflated with neoliberalism, because there is a kind of neoliberal consensus. And anybody who's aware of kind of late capitalism uh, rejects that consensus, right? Neoliberalism is, ver is very harmful, ultimately. And so, um, so going back, coming back to goal B, goal B, I propose is a more radical consensus. Goal B is what we'll achieve after the next session or the next series of sessions, right? So my intention for today is just to invite everybody to help plan the next session, to participate, to design an invitation that maximizes the amount of thought leaders that want to participate. And so, and just to get everybody on board with the idea of consensus building so that they can do their own research towards those ends, seek consensus with other individuals. And most importantly, in a sense, what we're doing today is understand group process towards consensus. Um, so yeah, to keep us moving, um, uh, I hope that we've, we've uh, gained a commitment. If there's no objections, I'm gonna sort of assume that. And maybe um, suggest we go into breakout rooms to design the to refine the, the clarification and 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 sort of assign people to the core team. And so this is sort of between the second and third breath. Um, what do you think of that, Peter? If we if we go into quick breakout rooms for maybe two to five minutes, whatever you think is appropriate for people to kind of reflect on what I've introduced and kind of get to know each other. And, and bond a little bit and then come back into the main group. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Um, so five minutes, how many people per uh, group? Uh, how many people are in here? Uh, 40, roughly 40. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe five per, per group so that there's, that would be eight breakout rooms roughly. Um, and, and we didn't set the time frame in the beginning. Uh, was it 60 minutes we were here or 90 minutes? That's what, what I was, was thinking, 60, 60, 60 minutes. minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, I can, I can absolutely go longer, but just for the kind of recorded session, I think that's that's mm -hmm. better. So this isn't like Brent talks for 30 minutes in a 30 right. minute q and I wanna try to get through these eight breaths in an hour. And uh, just one thing from uh, kind of a facilitator stewarding note, um, I usually like to design sessions sort of like an Ikea manual. So it's like step by step, very clear mm. instructions to follow. And that helps translate kind of abstract kind of concepts. So uh, is there anything anyone before we put into group any clarifying questions of what to talk about there? Um, like what you need or Brett, do you want any to clarify anything further? Um, yeah, anyone can speak up if they want. But let me just clarify. Uh, I mean, please do pull up the PDF uh, on, on your own so you can help follow along. But I just want to clarify, I'm the caller in the sense of a person who deeply holds a question, a problem, a challenge, etc. Sometimes there are several callers. This is what it says in the document. And the, the callers are the ones who invite the host to help them. And then Peter is the sort of host here. And so the question it says is, what is really at stake, right? And what if some of us work together to surface the real question and need that matters to the to the community and to solving the meta crisis? Um, and so, I'm the caller in this capacity because I've also kind of aggressively I'll, I'll own I've critiqued some of these online spaces that I mentioned uh, because I think they're they're harboring some kind of anomalies or pathologies or hypocrisies that just need to be fleshed out. And so, um, again, you, we're talking about mainly consensus building itself, but then potentially the deeper question is like, what, what is the meta crisis within the meta crisis, right? And there's even been a Stoa talk on that. And I watched that and I have critiques of that, right? So I think these things can be endlessly dissected, but I'm trying to build consensus uh, more rapidly and iteratively so we can, you know, get through divergence, emergence, and then converge to actually get somewhere. So when we put uh, the five people in the room for five minutes, uh, ideally, what would you like them to do? 
Um, let's say practice forming a little consensus among your group. And that can be um, on the things I've raised, the consensus building process itself, you know, do you agree? Or, or let's throw up a, a kind of public issue like climate change. You know, I, I mean, I would insist there already is absolute consensus on climate change, right? 100% of climate scientists agree. And so part of our challenge is to understand that. And then there's a lot of groaning involved in catching up to, to why the discourse is so muddled around things like climate change, why there's so much political stagnation and paralysis. And there has been for over a hundred years, right? So amongst your group, try to build a consensus among the five or so of you and see how that goes and try to, try to think beyond this session and come back with ideas for for uh, posing the invitation for the next session. So the the consensus that they're trying to form around is the invitation for the next session of what to kind of cohere around and have a consensus around. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. All right, so uh, let's give it a shot. Um, four to five people per group uh, for five minutes. I will. Uh, just ignore the timer. I don't know how to set the timer thing, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring everyone back in five minutes. Oh, I can set the timer here. Uh, all right, looks like everyone's back, Brent. All right, uh, welcome back, uh, most of us. I think there's still people uh, trickling in. Um, so I want to kind of solicit feedback from the different breakout groups, uh, but first I'll say, you know, the breakout group I was in, there was some uh, confusion and um, some silence and, and not enough time, of course. And so I think, you know, the, the, the failure, the groaning is okay. It's part of the process. And we can always go back to the kind of the call itself and the clarification before moving further. Um, so does anybody else want to, um, speak up with some feedback from their great, their breakout room? I'm happy to say at least my experiences, uh, and I hope it's okay, Brent, um, that like, there was certainly some confusion and some like lack of clarity. So I guess the, maybe the, the title of the breath is precisely right to, to get to the point of feeling clear of what this is. Um, one practical question that came up is it seems that there are different roles in the process, right? There's these senseis and there's other people. Uh, do people self-assign roles? Is this something that also emerges as part of the process? Um, and when is there this kind of commitment where people really say I'm in the process in this role and I accept the responsibilities of that role in the process and where then uh, like pe people feel that they solidly know what they're, what they're, what they're doing in this process. Um, and just as a thought that happened at the end for me, um, it, this might be like a board game where even though we all have the manual in front of us, uh, it would be tremendously helpful if one of us had already played this game, this particular process, and could actually answer those questions. Because it's like one of these things where if you don't know exactly how something practically plays out, it's difficult to translate that manual into an actual like action sequence of like, okay, that's what we're doing now. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, thanks. Thanks for the feedback. Um, yeah, I think people kind of self self assign and I want people to think of this as like a recruitment session for future sessions, because again, the, the kind of primary call is I'm insisting that the consensus building process is one that everyone should seek out if they're actually sort of seeking the truth and it's a participatory thing. And there's a comment here that says, uh, you know, design of session to be more inclusive and include more voices, right? And we don't want a cacophony of everybody speaking at once, not everyone wants to speak, but we do want everyone to be heard, right? And that's essential to this process that through consensus building and through, you know, expert research that, you know, ethnographers go out into the field and interview people, that's what they do. They're sort of professional listeners. And so, 
So we're bringing research to the table. We're also bringing people's personal experience uh, and their and their skills as facilitators, um, right? And so, uh, I mean, part of the fun here today is that I'm acknowledging that I'm not a facilitator of consensus building, but that I'm that's part of why I'm insisting that we should do this. And I'm actually subjecting my own theses to critique and to refinement from others, right? I'm saying this is a participatory thing and we should, we should all kind of, uh, kind of jump in. So I hope that kind of addresses uh, Johan's points. Uh, anybody else wanna give some feedback from their breakout session? Was it doomed to failure? Uh, did you Jen, achieve Jen, any consensus? Jen has uh, something. Yeah, I, I think it was doomed to failure because it was so short. And I think consensus mm -hmm. is one of those things that takes time and it takes people have to sit together and we need time from, I will kind of sit, stand up and chat and, and take up space. And then I need to learn to be quiet and listen to other people who are much more slower to come forward. So, so it definitely needs, needs time. I don't think the confusion is a problem. I think like the, 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 the David Bohmian dialogues and what have you sometimes wandering a little lost is I think can be quite informative because if if the leader or the facilitator has a very tight control on the questions they're actually there's not that space for emergence so much so sometimes being a little bit loose and not really being sure or people misunderstanding so I think we we, we had a quite a nice little open discussion in our group someone a couple were really quiet three of us chatted quite a bit but it was really brief Excellent. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. And of course, I agree that it is too short. It is doomed to fail to fail. Um, and again, like sort of to give some context that very few people will have in this is that, uh, you know, I, I published this article like over six months ago. And, and so these things take time. And, and I've been arguing for years, like to get ahead of the culture war, which is what what Peter's trying to do, we need uh, a much more cogent, shared understanding of what the problem is and uh, and the, the protocols need to bring us together to con to convergence rather than more divergence and emergence so uh, again to bring it back to the to the diagram because i'm trying to, to to teach us all this and learn myself as well peter's holding the space i'm inviting everyone to practice right and the practice is to uh, uh, keep shifting your information ecology, your priorities, your own practices to, uh, to, come to, to come to actually sort of seek conflict, but conflict through a conflict resolution matrix, right? Because we don't just wanna endlessly bounce off each other on the internet. We wanna actually dialogue and deliberate. And so, um, Again, I'm trying to build consensus around consensus. And so I value everybody's input in that. And if, if you want, uh, we've got like 15 minutes, we're probably not gonna sort of get through all the breaths. We can either, we can either redo the kind of clarify and invite stage, or we can jump ahead to have a breakout session where people harvest what they've learned from both the first breakout room and this open session and then we'll come back into an open session to act and reflect. <clears throat> and um, again, my goal is to get everyone to commit to doing this process again, right? And so that we have wiser informed action and we have stakeholder connectedness as per the diagram. So who wants to jump in? Would you like uh, me to um, share some thoughts, Brent? Uh, yes, please. From a steward's perspective, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll share a, um, a bunch, and this is coming from experience because you know I've hosted like what seven hundred <laughs> events at the Stoa, and I'm a trainer at Dale Carnegie Training, so I have experience in designing uh, workshops. And to use John Verveke's kind of three P's of knowing, there's a propositional knowing, and then there's participatory knowing, uh, and there's like a gap, that translation gap that's needed between having this framework and then actually having the uh, be able to skill set to do it. And um, and one of the design sort of of this session to go meta on this session itself, it's the store is an open space and we don't know who's going to come. People not, might not read the article. They might not even know the word, what the meta crisis is. And when they hear stuff like that, their brain just shuts down and they're like, what, what the, what the mm -hmm. fuck's happening? Uh, especially mm -hmm. if there's so much kind of 
propositional kind of frameworks presented without enough kind of like step by step, big baby steps to like what to do. Um, so that's one sort of thing that I noticed when I was hopping around between groups. Um, and the other thing with, um, let's say if you throw a bunch of people in a room and say make a bill of consensus, uh, for example, uh, there's a term I find quite useful from the pickup artist actually called the social nexus. It's the person in any social group that everything orientates around them. And uh, if if the, like, for example, a host on the social nexus of the STOA, um, but if you put people in a group, the person who usually has more verbal capacity, who's more articulate, uh, tends to be the social nexus. Someone who's a conversational narcissist who just likes to hide, uh, interrupt, uh, you know, uh, in the conversation tends to be the social nexus. And then that prevents the people who are more shy, don't want to participate from not participating. Um, so I find like the design parameters of like a conversational framework and empathy circles, circling, all these things help with that, allows for the people who have really great insights, but don't speak up because either they don't have the temperament or the capacity to speak up, um, that would allow that to emerge. So that's another thought that came alive when, when I was hopping from breakout rooms. Can I, can yeah. I respond briefly? Uh, mm -hmm. in, in our group, it, we all said our names and where we're from. So we had everyone's face, we had everyone's voice. Um, one person preferred to listen. Uh, two persons were very much involved in concepts around consensus and what that concept could mean. Uh, one person had a question about uh, boundaries and making boundaries. And I had something, um, because I'm interested in clarity and actionable processes, which Brent has set out as one of his desired outcomes, which I share with him. I want a stimulus check. That's what I want to have happen. I want to create the conditions for that to happen. And then we can ask what happens next. A lot of other things might start to happen. So if we can create a dynamic reference point in each of our small groups in this next phase of reiteration, I think that would be fabulous. Thank you. Thanks, John. I want you to have a stimulus check too. I want everybody to have regular monthly stimulus checks in the form of universal basic income. And that's one of the policy cornerstones I think there needs to be consensus about. And in fact, on the left, there is a kind of de facto consensus around these things going back uh, many years, right? And so, um, so I wanna say that, but I also wanna to touch back on Peter's point about kind of the social nexus and what I call the kind of attentional hegemony of kind of some of the sense makers, right? And whether or not they create space for, for dissent and for alternative voices. And, you know, it's kind of case in point, like Peter reached out to me like uh, a, a year and a half ago uh, to, you know, after I finished the Emergencia article and you, you wanted to interview me. And I had to decline because I had uh, poor health and there was also other extraneous factors that I wanted to unpack with Peter privately, right? And we did a little bit of that, but, but in effect, <clears throat> you know, these issues that needed to emerge back then got kicked down the road uh, months and months and years. And, and so people wonder, people who are literate in the meta crisis wonder why it's happening. It's because, you know, as per John's point about wanting stimulus checks, uh, people can't agree on how to get there. And we really need to figure it out. We need to agree, right? And, and uh, you know, Bernie Sanders is, is championing that cause. And that's why he ran for, for president twice in a row. And so politics is is the the crux of the grown zone of this consensus building process because people want to uh basically at the outset just be heard about what who their favorite guy is or their favorite woman as a candidate right and the the process of um you know choosing political leaders is, is much more uh, complex and, and critical and it, it has to invite us all to um to be heard, and so it requires everybody to to subject themselves to a, to a kind of group process. Um, <clears throat> there, uh, um, we have ten minutes left. My suggestion mm -hmm. is to kind of field any just thoughts or, or amongst a group instead of putting people in another breakout room. Sure. Um, I think Jote had her hand up previously. If um, 
that yeah that's right i don't know if you're shaking your head or not uh i i uh put my hand up i was agreeing with what was being said oh okay um, but i could share some feedback yeah um yeah i'm also really interested in what joe chen brought up about roles that was my impulse when we got into the group um i asked can i move into the caller role and um, i was in brent's group and it was it was interesting what happened i i was sensing a lot of um this energy of like distraction or something um that i've been sensing throughout the session and i mentioned it in the group and then i never actually got to step into caller and so um then i was like okay i'm gonna because my first request was to, for someone to take notes because i was like trying to um like structure it somehow because it seemed like that might help with the distraction energy um and then that didn't happen so then i said okay i'll take notes and then my notes are actually really interesting because i'm like wow it's like there's just that the energy of distraction is really like even in my own note taking because i'm like i couldn't really get that part because i was distracted so <laughs> um yeah so i that's that's my the reflection that i would share about it um yeah, I think roles are important. I mean, if we're going to play this kind of like, it feels like you're introducing kind of like a chess game of some sort. It's like, we're going to really cut through this and we've got some roles. And so I, I like attached onto that as a way to try and cut through. Um, but I don't even, I don't know if the cutting energy is what's going to take us through. I think something else, curious. Yeah, if I could just give some, some quick feedback on that. Like it, for me, um, you know, I, I tried to agree with your concerns in the breakout room and also I'm making connections with what Jen said and with what, what Johan said. And, you know, I do think we need to move in the direction of, let's say, designing a group game, like a kind of glass bead game for consensus or something like that, where people, where we, we make up many roles, right? And, you know, I'll, I'll be the gadfly, I'll be the, the Socrates or whatever. And, and so there can be like dozens of archetypal roles, you know, and there can be a, a note taker and whatnot. But there's also a kind of round table effect in which we're all equal, we all see each other as equals. And so, um, again, you know, uh, we'll, we'll keep, we'll, we'll, we'll let other people talk, but before we run, run out of time, I want people to sort of commit to this process, not commit to me yet, Commit to the process of, of consensus building. Seek it out. Learn about it. Practice it with other people. Um, and and again, like, you know, contact me because I will be hosting uh, future sessions in other spaces. Uh, I'm doing one in February, in fact, in, in another space, and I want to host my own as well. I want to invite people to my consensus. So. Um, Again, uh, so I invite you know contributions to help clarify what my call was and is, and how we can invite more key stakeholders and and sense makers to participate in a sort of higher level cohort where people are challenged, challenging each other, and that that's facilitated, because there's not really time or space for that today, and there's not really the specific cohort that needs to converge. I just hope to pitch to this audience today the kind of the, the organic process of consensus building itself. All right, so let's uh, go with Evan, then Adam. I think Adam, you wanted to say something too. So then, and then we'll close out with uh, final thoughts. So Evan, you're up. Yeah, I had a sort of process commentary and that I think this process is quite promising, but it also, as a note, seems to want a lot more time than a one hour or 90 minute or even two hour session would allow for. So I just wanted to give that as feedback because it seems like a very promising sort of a process consideration, but for a sort of STOA session format, I just don't see how the process can be done justice in such a limited um, time window. And, and that might actually, in some sense, prejudice people against exploring the process more if it's compressed to a degree where it loses some of its integrity. And, but th that, that's a constructive criticism. I, I think the process, like I said, has a lot of promise, but the timing issue, it might be worth devoting, say, most of a day to, or at least an afternoon. Yeah, let me quickly respond to Evan to say that's absolutely correct. And as I say in my article and in the kind of, kind of uh, pitch for this session, that, um, that these things do take enormous resources, enormous uh, commitment to facilitation, and that they work uh, in situations of high uncertainty and low trust. 
and that there are a lot of skeptics of this process and the research addresses the skeptics to say, well, this is why you're skeptical and this is why that skepticism is misplaced. And I would love nothing more than to do this over a weekend or an eight week uh, series where we spend a lot more time on these issues. And, and um, again, sort of case in point, as, as Peter knows, as he was forming the STOA uh, around this time last year, I was trying and I failed in, in my own way to, to get through to him to try to influence some of his um, planning and um, you know his uh, agenda and the, the kind of diaspora of people involved. Um, and I'm very impressed with some of the people he's hosted and very disappointed in some others, right? And so again, as a sort of more radical intervention beyond the consensus concept, I'm, I'm proposing that this should have been done sooner. And so, you know, whoever's willing to, you know, host these things themselves and, and invite me and others to participate, I think it will be very uh, fruitful. And I talked to Evan the other day, we had a very constructive kind of dialogue. And <clears throat> I, I, I want to iterate too, I think, you know, consensus can be built between two people. And, and so it, you don't even need an elaborate process. You just need to try. You need to listen. You need to be very open and, and critical. Uh, and, and that can happen, right? It's just that there's a lot of conceptual tools out there for us to be ready for the change that has to happen, the individual and collective change. So uh, who's next? <laughs> um, so I think Adam, Jack, Alan, Slayton, you had a... You wanted to share something or no or adam golden some oh, okay. some adam <laughs> yeah, I, I had a quick remark so i'm gonna have to share um i'll commit brent i'm ready for the next session that, that, that's um, my comment awesome there you go yeah I, I i had a quick remark from our breakout session that uh, jen was suggesting that i bring forward um it's just a concrete proposal to um next time engage in some kind of meta voting as an exercise um, like so like electoral reform is an example of meta voting. Um, another simple example that's possible is in the, the game we were discussing in the chat called pure nomic, which just has the one rule that you have to use consensus for any change to the game state initially, but you can change that rule. And so if you change that rule and say, oh, you only need a 50% consensus or no, we need a 60% consensus. Well, then you're engaging in meta voting because you're voting on what the threshold is for voting. And at any rate, because it starts off that it could give people a lot of practice with um, consensus. And um, the reason I would draw people's attention to the voting system itself, at least one reason I was mentioning in the breakout, how, you know, Rebel Wisdom did their whole series on polarization, but they didn't talk about how the voting system can create polarization. Because, you know, first past the post leads, tends towards a two party system statistically, which means we'd have to change it if we want to stop polarization, but then we have to have some like, consensus based way of changing how we, you know, form a, a vote, voting based consensus. Thanks, Adam. I, I, I like the idea of um, meta voting. And I, I thought about it. I don't know how it would be practically, practically executed, but I'd love for us to vote on some non controversial stuff, right? So we have 20, 32 people in here, you know, can we agree that, uh, you know, climate change is, is both natural and anthropogenic, and that it's a serious policy issue, you know, I'd love to like, really feel 100% consensus on that. And then we can move to more controversial things to table and and yeah to different sub points um <clears throat> so I, I appreciate those uh that that commitment from the first adam and the suggestion from the second so we're approaching the top of the hour brent um i'm going to hand it over to you for any closing thoughts and my suggestion if that's okay with you that your lecture portion before we put people to breakout rooms that will be on youtube which you can use as an artifact sort of as a beacon to call the others um for further experiments uh let me know how, what you think of that and uh, i'll take you in now for any final thoughts to, to close us off okay thanks yeah I, I hope you'll post the whole video um because i think the you know nobody was um compromised or anything and i think there there's uh, a lot as part of this artifact that needs to be included that um you know that we we didn't quite get through the whole process but um <clears throat> that we did it anyways, right? It was a, it was a first attempt. Um, so closing thoughts, I, mean, I think I said everything I needed to say, except that 
of course, there's always more to be said. And there's, there's, there's uh, millions of marginalized voices that, that uh, you know, the alter globalization movement tries to amplify. And, and, you know, my, for better or worse, my, my personal story and engagements are a large part of the, the resolution to this unfolding meta crisis. And, and let me just uh, single out Game B, for example, because they are a group that has generated a bunch of sort of sense-making practices, some of them very exclusionary. And when there was a controversy uh, that, um, multiple controversies, but say Vinay Gupta, for example, to kind of kind of displace it from my own episode, uh, that was swept under the rug. And then, you know, I had a conflict with Jim Rutt, but Jim and I actually spoke publicly, at least, right? And so we did that as an example. And we talked about consensus building, you know, and so it was fruitful, at least to have that encounter. But because it was just a conversation, and it wasn't the consensus building process itself, it's not going to go any further. Right? So, so I'm going to continue to invite people like Jim back to, to this process. And of course, it's going to require more than just my efforts. It's going to require a kind of collective commitment to consensus. So that's what I want people to take away. All right. Uh, so we'll close out here and I will upload uh, the video, just editing the kind of the technical uh, glitches. And if you don't want to be on YouTube and you spoke up, just message me privately or email me. I'm not too hard to find. Uh, and then I will remove you uh, from the video. Um, that being said, uh, I'll make some closing announcements in a moment. But Brent, thank you so much for coming back to the STOA. Um, and uh, yeah, upcoming events. Uh, we have two people. I think David Nafazian, are you still in the room? Uh, maybe not. Uh, if not, uh, Evan, could you plug your SenseMaker in Residence uh, event? Yeah, so this will be the third session of my SenseMaker in Residence series this month. We're going to be taking a look at some topics that are related to this session, actually. The third session is on communitas and the implications of the frameworks and uh, other things that we've been discussing in the first three sessions um, for uh, for what it means to interact as a community and what it means to have healthy community dynamics, especially in light of uh, adult developmental stages and how to create communities across different stages that work well and are mutually respectful. So it's gonna be hopefully an interesting session um, and I hope everyone uh, decides to come, thanks. Beautiful. Um, and we have a new, uh, we have a communal podcast, the thing that's happening at the store, there's gonna be a bunch of them. So these are people who are going to uh, have the sort of the, this podcast type communal podcast type format and have dialogos type sessions. And Greg Henriquez and Greg Thomas are doing something called body and soul, the mind of culture. And many guests on that one, including John Verbeke, Nora Bateson, uh, Diane Musha Hamilton, Daniel Schmachtenberger, Jordan Hall, Zach Stein, Jamie Wheel, and much more. So uh, that should be quite a treat. That starts in February on Monday. So you can go there uh, and RSVP on the website right here. Um, so that being said, Brent, everyone, thank you for coming to the store today. <laughs>